does it matter? Welcome to What Does It Matter podcast. I am your host, Sean Faust. With me today is filmmaker, film reviewer, uh, musician. Kind yeah, of. yeah, like an all around everything guy. Star Wars fan, room fan to some extent. Sure. Uh, Jamie in Salaco. Thanks for hanging out, dude. Thanks for having me. Right on, man. We're going to talk about a film that I saw recently called Will Reading. Now, you might be thinking, is it good, Will Reading? Ha, ha, ha. That was stupid, but I'm going to leave it in anyway. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, <laughs> it is very good. Uh, you know what? I'm going to shut up, and you're just going to go through the entire synopsis of the movie and then how you, you mortgaged five people's homes that you didn't even own to uh, make this film. I'm just kidding about the second part. That's, uh, that's if you submit it to film festivals. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll certainly answer that question. But uh, So the movie is about a woman. Uh, she has a child, and her husband has died, and she finds herself in a difficult financial position. And uh, lo and behold, it turns out that there is a second document from her late husband that uh, she's hoping will be the answer to her financial problems and herself and her brother-in-law and their two friends are also named in this document. So they're all going to get together and find out if this is going to help them go where they need to go in their lives and, and get things moving. And then, and then the movie happens. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> pandemonium ensues. Uh, now, you mentioned before about submitting to film festivals. I don't know if you heard the episode with Daniel Hubbard, who did the. No, I didn't. She writes the one. Ghost Bike. It was a short film, and it cost him X amount of dollars to make, but it cost him about double just submitting to all the film festivals. Yeah, I, I've I've kind of lost patience uh, myself. Uh, we still have some film festivals that we haven't gotten to the date where they tell you if you're in or not. Um, but uh, there have been some that like we just didn't hear back from at all. Uh, there have been some that, you know, we got a really nice letter from this one film festival in Texas. And it was a free submission. And the guy got back to me and he was just like, yeah, like I got a bazillion entries. He's like, I didn't expect this. Um, but uh, he's like... He's like, I just, I can't take everybody. He's like, that's just kind of what happened. He's, he's yeah. like, I wanted, you know, I don't know what he wanted, 50 or something like that. And he got like a thousand, wow. you know, like, yeah, like he got totally overwhelmed. And I think he said like at some point he's like, I just had to stop watching stuff. He's, you know, he's, and, and yeah, like I, I have gotten a few of those and it's okay to get rejected. And that's just how it is. If you're in any creative medium, yeah. like there's going to be lots of rejection and that's fine. Um, but you know, some people you don't hear back from, some things are super disorganized and some things are certainly more expensive than they need to be. And, and that's a big part of, uh, I think where the frustration comes in for people, you know, and even if you do it in the most cost effective way possible, it's not free really to make any kind of art. And, you know, and then people are like, oh, I need, you know, $50 or a hundred dollars just to watch it or listen to it. You know, it, it seems, it's like, oh, I thought we were all on the same team here. Like, this is a film festival. It's, you know, it's not, but apparently it is. It is. Well, it, it, there's no <laughs> I in team, but there's an M and an E. <laughs> the, but the other thing, too, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, time is still money. So say, and I'm sure. not saying this against any artist, because when I submit to festivals or something like that, when it's 25, 30 bucks, and it's like, well, there's no guarantee, and I understand that. But at the same time, you're listening to a five-minute song. Somebody watching, like, a 15 minute to a 90 minute movie that's time out of their day that they're not working on something else that their income comes from. So I could see like 50 bucks maybe. Yeah. But, yeah. Like if you want like 20, $25 an hour and I'm asking for, you know, 90 minutes of your time, right, right on. You want 40, yeah. 50 bucks. I hear you. Yeah. But a hundred, um, 150 bucks to a thousand bucks is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's bonkers. You know? Yeah. There, there are plenty of film festivals that we didn't apply to. Because I just decided that what they wanted was unreasonable. And, you know, some people, you know, just asked for simple things in terms of uh, press kit and so on. But other people just, you know, I felt like I was filing income tax. You know, it was just, uh, you know, just shades of uh, college financial aid forms. It's just <laughs> like, and it just went on and on and on. So at some point we kind of, I, I just kind of said, all right, like, I feel like we've applied to enough and 
frankly, like even if it gets into any of these, like what's that going to do for us? We get to put their seal on the box. It's Great. exposure. Yeah, but I mean, to who? It, it, exposure you is know? a blank check written to a fool. You know, like, like yeah, I, I couldn't fill a 300-seat room for free. So, you know, like if you're telling me that like a million people are going to come to this film festival and see my movie, like I just, I don't buy it. Yeah, it's true. And maybe you get the network and you get to meet other people. And I'm sure there are tons of benefits to it, but I mean, at this point where we are and the way people consume media, it just seems like you're much better, you're much better off getting your movie on to as many platforms as you can. And then I think this is much better exposure than a film festival. I I think this, what's happening right now is much better because we're much more likely to reach like-minded people. You know what would be cool too is you know how Netflix and I know that they're not a sponsor, but you, when we're talking about a medium like this, oh, you it's, can't it's not impossible. Bring it up. Right. Like, so Netflix gives you that uh, recommended for you. Like, what do you think? Like, when Will Reading's up, like people, it'll be suggested because people watched what? Like, what do you think? Um, I would think like a Kung Fury or a Turbo Kid. Yeah, I mean, I, I think when I kind of sit back and look at the movie now, it's kind of a long episode of the simpsons in in a sense and i think i started to see that more and more and uh i'm not trying to spoil the movie for you but um i guess i'll say uh marge versus the monorail is a episode of the simpsons i like and i wasn't really thinking about it when i was writing the movie um but if somebody made that comparison obviously that's very high praise um but there is kind of a i i could see how somebody could say oh do you think there's a chance the track could vent? You know, there's right. that sequence in that episode. And I, you know, our sequence is kind of similar at a similar point, you know, where it seems like everything's going great. And we're going to celebrate the end of the first act with a, with a great big song monorail, you know? And, <laughs> and now, see, I knew what you're talking about because of the movie. I don't think I've ever seen that episode. Cause uh, this oh, might sound it's... like blasphemy to a lot of people. I am not a huge fan of cartoons in general oh i, I could thought see it, that. Like, you thought i was gonna say the simpsons no i'm just not in general i mean i like family guy there are cartoons that i have watched that i enjoy but overall i don't go out of my way to watch the simpsons or i know that there was something animated i just watched recently and i was kind of like yeah but in general it's not my cup of cake transformers the movie from 86 which is also the best transformers movie ever oh i'm sure i might watch that the transformers lot. movies are painful Revenge of the Fallen or Attack of the Clones? <laughs> Which one? You know what? I could at least follow the plot of Attack of the Clones, even if I didn't think it was particularly great. Which one is Revenge of the Fallen? The second one or yeah, the third one? The second. No, the third one's great. It actually has a story. Uh, and I'll, I'll actually say that I do like that one a lot. The, that's the one with Spock. The second one, which is just, I follow oh, the story. Oh, that's the it's one. Sucks. That's the one with the robot balls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, we're not talking about Michael Bay's shitty movies. Sorry. Sorry. I got no, no, no. It's, no, it happens. <laughs> like, it happened earlier. Um, oh, I will say that Michael Bay does have two good movies, though. The Rock. Bad Boys. Bad Boys. I haven't seen that in a long time. It's a great one. Even the sequel is not that bad. It's just long. He got to that point of making five hour movies. Right. So, anywho. So, yeah, the, your musical number was pretty cool. I actually liked that a lot. And I that wasn't was expecting really... it came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I hope it it, it does. Uh, I just hope that, like, that point of the movie that it seems tonally appropriate, that things are very slowly shifting into this weird place where it doesn't seem inappropriate. I think it's okay for it to, like, oh, like, I didn't expect right. that to start happening. But I, I hope that like from a tonal standpoint people don't think like it's completely out of character for the movie as a whole um, i thought so it I, fit. yeah but i, I, but that, I was also like whole... you've got this you got this intro which by the way i loved the sound factor that you don't really hear anything going on in the kitchen for a while while, while you've got the um, the music going and then all of a sudden you hear her crying or was she, was she crying or you just hear chopping the vegetables? I don't remember what it was, but there was like no sound. And then the sound like slowly came in. Was it when uh, Greg Vorob no, is, no, is in the... Is dun, in... Dun, 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 dun. Every time we say Vorob, there's like a metal song now. Vorob. 
<laughs> oh, nice, nice. Um, <laughs> no, no, it was before that. There's the very opening credits. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of went back and forth on that montage, and I ultimately decided not to include Foley, really, there. It was um, a great choice. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure why that felt right, but that's that's what I ended up going with. Um, and, and well, that was really my instinct all along. And then the more times I watched it, I thought, oh, maybe I'll go back and do things. And then I never did. Um, oh, but you did ask about um, how many uh, mortgages did I have to take right, to make right. this movie? And uh, fortunately, the answer is none. Um, we actually uh, made this movie very cheaply. I think uh, we came in under five thousand uh, dollars. First of all, because the actors all donated their time, um, which I mean, you know, you're finding people that you know play for the love of the game. You know, when they don't care about that sort of thing. Right. Um, so uh, obviously, you have to send them all the possible thank yous. Um, and uh, my family owns that house. So that that was pretty easy right there. Um, I'd been collecting the lights over time. You know, I had this big uh, 1,000 LED light. Um, I think when that was new, that cost like two or three hundred dollars, something like that. Um, and we had this 500 LED that I assume cost half, like 150, something like that. And then uh, we had this other big soft box that just had, you know, like five different. Uh, independent sources that all kind of came out as one and you know behind the um, softbox you know it all kind of gelled together Um, and I I just had some other clamp lights lying around particularly when we were outside like I would just go to well you definitely need uh, it there because I've seen that backyard yeah I'm pretty pretty sure like well you had it lit there was an after party that I was allowed to go to, even though I wasn't in the, the movie. Because the after party was, I'm showing it, was it was for adults. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I seen I've seen it lit, but I I've also seen it lit by your lights. But I can imagine that just being black. yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I went and just got like the biggest backyard floods Home Depot had. I bought a bunch of clamp lights. Um, I put I screwed like two big old two by fours together, you know, and uh, I like tied that on to an A frame ladder. And then I put like a, a cross across the top of the two by four. Um, and I guess that had like two or two or so clamp lights on either side. Um, and then I had a, and those had big floods. There was another array of floods. Um, I think there are photos of this on willreadingmovie.com. There you go. Uh, <laughs> um, are there? There might be, or maybe they haven't made it there. They might just be on Facebook. I think Behind the scenes. I think they're just on Facebook. I don't know if those have made it there. I think that that top picture is is a uh, movable thing where you like you mouse over it and it tells you what to do. No, maybe it's the next one. Try the, yeah, oh, yeah. oh now it's happening. Um, yeah, I don't know. That picture might only be on Facebook. We're reading movie on Facebook. Dan Conrad. You know what? Let's. I. I'd like to talk about your cast. Let me. Uh, because you've got a pretty interesting group of people. Now I know the first scene after that, after the opening that we spoke of, is uh, Greg, kind of channeling Bill Murray at the end of Quick Change when he's disguising his. I don't know if you've ever seen Quick Change. It's been so long. It's a perfect comedy. But he kind of. Hi. How are you? He kind of like brings out that. Bill Murray disguising his voice to Jason Robards thing, and I liked it. But we'll we'll get to that in a moment. So we'll start. You want to go in order uh, that the site's on, or do you sure? Wanna... Sure, that seems right. simple. So uh, Katie, who I, I've told you, and I'm gonna I've got to say it here because I her mom is awesome. Because while you guys were doing the Q and A, I think when you were done and everybody was walking back, her mom pulls out a phone. And it's a flip phone, just like mine. And I had to be like, hey, I couldn't help but notice that you've got a flip phone. And we were like BFFs for like three minutes. Nice. It was awesome. It was awesome. So, Katie, uh, I don't know, uh, Weigel? Yes. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, that's how you remember it. It's just like Catherine Heigl. Ah. But she's Katie Weigel. Except she's not a, well, I don't know Catherine Heigl personally. So, I can only say what I've heard through the press, which is probably not true anyway. But she's 
reputedly not nice. Apparently, she's an asshole. Yeah. Oh, drag. Well, but Katie's super nice. Katie's I can tell super you nice. And she sure. was not in a Steven Seagal movie as Catherine Heigl was, so she's even cooler. Yes, yes. that that helps. Is the addition by subtraction there, for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, I think uh, she's done a lot of stage acting uh, in the area. Um, I saw her in a, she, we lost her for a month to, a, a musical version of a Christmas story. Um, and uh, I think she had a couple of different small parts in that. Um, but I, I've, I've seen her, I know like she's literally like an award winning actress. Like I've literally seen her hold an award Oh uh, really? Yeah. Nice, which nice. I don't care who gives it to you. That's pretty. That's, yeah, no, it's awesome. That's and I awesome. also see that she was in the Music Man, so that explains the fact that she's able to sing as well. Because yeah, I'm guessing she was Marion. I don't. I don't know if you know the Music Man at all. I, I do. Huge, and 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 I I also uh, saw a photo of that one, and it looked like a Marion costume. Um, was she a librarian? I uh-huh. I presume. I would hope that, so. That she, yeah, because she's got the voice for that. Yeah, you would, you would, you would think. Um, but I mean, she's somebody who takes her craft really seriously, oh, yeah. and she's she seems like she's always studying, always working. Um, and I wouldn't say that she necessarily got the most underwritten role in the movie. Um, but I think I think it was a, to me like on paper, I was like, I'm not exactly sure where to approach this because over the drafts the character changed from a very cynical conniving person to a person that's trying to get by and do the right thing for a kid and like over that time like who the character was kind of became less of a flat straight sort of character to somebody that had a lot of different dimensions to their personality and was kind of a more fleshed out person. And it, that to me seems like the hardest thing to approach in acting, you know, whereas, you know, you give somebody something wacky to do. You just, you go in and you'd be right. wacky, you know, there's not a lot of different, uh, roads to turn down, you know, whereas, uh, I think Katie kind of had a tough job between that ambiguity and being in almost every single scene of the movie, you know, and then like she'd be doing other shows and, you know, she's just a person with a job, you know? Right. Right. You know, right. So, and the fight scenes too. Yeah. Like the fight yeah. Scenes. And they, they just all took that for granted. Like that was totally normal. You know, like nobody, <laughs> nobody was like, Oh, you're, you're a crazy person. Like that. Why are we swinging baseball bats and canes at each other? They're like, okay, here we go. <laughs> you know, like they just acted like that was all totally normal. Nice. And she was great. I, I, first of all, I thought everybody was great in the movie. Even I would even say that uh, Greg Volrob <laughs> was good in it. Um, yeah, no, I thought she was fantastic. And then we've got a guy I know more of a writer. I've seen him in stuff, uh, but the the fantastically outspoken in this movie, Dan Conrad, who you and I have both mentioned earlier, is that. When you hang out with him, he's just a mellow guy, just calm and hey, yeah, yeah. No. And he, then in this movie, he's just a dick. Uh, he he's not, you know, in in my experience, he's not sort of the quintessential, you know, loud sort of look how funny I am sort of person. But he is one of the funniest people you'll ever see on stage or screen. Uh, even you know, fifteen years ago, whatever it is, like the first time I ever saw him was on stage. And I was like, you know, this guy's just electricity. Like he's just, he's just the funniest person you've ever seen. His timings, yeah, flawless. It's, it's just outstanding. Yeah, no, I, um, I, and I was just blown because, I, like I said, I've seen him do stuff before. Where, like, one of my favorite scenes in Greg's Guardian Angel is them talking about like ties. I think it was a green tie or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. And he's just in the background, standing up and like just looking around and just yeah, playing the perfect background character. So now all of a sudden he's like being this like kind of yeah, like, I don't want to say obnoxious, but he's kind of a dick. And, and I, I think the proof is is maybe more in that scene than it is uh, because uh, he, he, yeah, as you said, he's in the background and they're talking about how the color tie that Dan's character is wearing is yeah. the wrong color tie and that his boss wouldn't like that. And he's just he's just playing it all on his face and it's kind of in the background. It's just so brilliant. And you just watch him like, yeah, it's the most interesting 
take you'll ever see on someone removing a tie. I agree. <laughs> it's the I best agree. performance of someone who's removing a tie timing, in the history of the world. Flawless. Oh, I, yeah. I it's great. With Will Reading and with that, and I know I've seen him in other stuff, but those are the first two things that come to mind when I think of Dan Conrad now is because of, I guess, knowing him in person, too. Where even like the timing of taking off the tie, uh, taking off the tie I stumbled on my words there, is that uh, it's still kind of him, though. It's like that mellow guy. Mm. And then this is just... Uh, ah fantastic i love this character in this yeah, yeah. and I, I i i was always sure that i wanted dan to play this role because i was just i, I was like oh he's just gonna crush it and like he's and it's the other thing like dan's such a great writer that i was like oh i know dan's gonna come in with his own ideas and his own take um and uh i just kind of thought dan would just like rewrite the script for me <laughs> because he was there i just thought but i i think i i overestimated uh how much could be done in uh, what short a period of time um but uh he he just crushed it each each and every day or each and every evening i guess i should say uh and he he made it look easy yeah i agree i agree and then up next in our cast of characters in this film oh look at that gang 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 rob it's Greg Volrob. Well, you people already know who he is. So next <laughs> is... <laughs> oh. Well, what made you cast Greg in the first place? Because I can't believe that some... I'm just kidding, brother. He's... Depending on his, if, if depending on his mood to, one day, like he could be like, "That's funny." Be like, if Fuck if you had to do a shot every time we said Greg Vorob on this episode, come on, come, 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 come. oh you yeah, you just you just yeah. be in the hospital by now. I imagine like he's gonna listen to this and have someone like feeding him grapes or something like that. <laughs> um, oh, and for those of you listeners who have been here since day one, he finally saw Ghostbusters. Maybe we'll have him on to talk about that, but I think we've milked that cow enough. I. Ended up casting Greg. Well, I guess that's not true. I didn't end up casting Greg. Like I was, <laughs> while I was writing, like I was pretty sure I was like, this character is going to be Dan. This character is going to be Greg. This character is going to be Mark. I was pretty sure that that that's that's what I wanted to do, and I tried to write with them in mind. Um, so there, I, I there was never any question that those were going to be my first choices. And uh, I got almost all my first choices. Um, nice. So you know that 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 I think also you know meant we didn't really have to rewrite a lot because I tried to write for them. And since I've had the opportunity to see them on stage a lot and see uh, their film work as well, I think that made it a little bit easier. Um, so that 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 worked out really well. Yeah, Greg. Vorob, gun, 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 gun. Oh, that's right. There's just there's two folks left in this fine feature film, and I will call it a fine feature film because I've seen it. You'll see it too when it's on like Netflix or. Are you going to do any more screenings, or just you're just waiting to hear back from the? Uh... Yeah, right. um, I don't think we're going to do a screening ourselves. We did talk about that. Like, oh, like uh, my wife's like, then we'll have our own film festival. And uh, I thought about that, but I think uh, the last screening we had and our inability to give away 300 free tickets has uh, made me think that, well, that's probably not such a good idea. Well, wasn't that, that was like a Tuesday or a Wednesday? It was a Wednesday, yeah. and I think that is typically high school graduation night, so that, that that's probably yeah, didn't help yeah. any. Um, so, I don't know, and, you know, over the summer is probably not the best time to do it either, cause, you know, especially around here, like, this is just vacation central. Well, this area, nobody goes out. Yeah. I can tell you that as a performer in this area and other areas where, other areas people go out. This area, just nobody really goes out because they, they've got their portable devices, and if you're not streaming it, well, you know, fuck you, I'm going to watch something that's streaming instead, why support you? Yeah. <laughs> Dicks. Yeah, you know how it is. No, I, I get it, yeah, I totally get it, and that's why... I don't talk about it that often because I'll get angry. <laughs> yeah, and it foul language will really come out. Yes. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about this cat. <laughs> so uh, Mark Seidenstein, uh, I think on paper had the most difficult role to play uh, because it it kind of has uh, an arc that's difficult, uh, and there's you know I I just kind of knowing like what kind of a actor 
Mark is. I was like, this that's the kind of actor I need for this role because he has like this personality in his performance that this role sorely needed. You know, somebody like me, for example, would be very, very bad in this role because you really need to bring a lot to it from yourself and from your performance. And I have no idea how to even go about such a thing. It's amazing how you he like explained all that too without spoiler territory. Right? I, I'm like trying not yeah. to completely ruin the movie. Yeah, no, uh, good call. I hate spoilers. I'm not a fan of spoilers. And like Mark does have that, that character arc that I've seen some of it elsewhere, but, uh, but then the, uh, but then there's the other side of it too. And then yeah, you've even got a post credit scene. Do I? Yeah. Or was that a during credit scene? And I'm not saying it involves Mark, but all of a sudden it just popped into my head that there's a uh, a post credit scene in that film. I think uh, yes, there is a. There is. Yes, there's. Yeah, a very are, are, are we calling? Are we still calling that shawarma, or is that like so five years ago? Do we not do that anymore? I think we're just gonna call it post credit. Okay. Yeah, shawarma. Oh my god, that was five years ago. Uh, do we not say uh, that's so anymore as well? Do we not do that anymore? Is that not vernacular anymore either? Maybe. It depends on the context. At the end of the episode, should I say I'm Audi? Or is that is that over? Oh, too? I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I decided to do a 90s vernacular class in the middle of this. But uh, Mark made it look easy. Um, he, you know, and he brought ideas. And it was it was really great because on paper, I was like, this is hard and maybe a little underwritten. And he just did it, and it was great. And he had, oh, man, that that was one of the longest nights. We did all his outside stuff. Uh, he has some scenes where he's outside, and we did all that in one long night. Did you really? Yeah, it was just oh me and God. him. And, you know, like, we had to wait for it to get dark, and, you know, like, it was the time of year we have to wait until about 8 o'clock. And yeah. It was a long wow. night. But he did it, and he yeah. kept doing it. And... Uh, you know, his yeah. outside scenes are fantastic too. I mean, it, it, when the ensemble's together, it's it's really good. But he was the one with the alone scenes that I liked the most. I think. Yeah. Although uh, no, no, there there is one other character that we haven't gone through yet because he, he's also kind of a dick to some extent. For sure. Yeah, and he has some uh, he has some alone scenes, which I'm going to ask you about when I get to because it's uh, it's not really spoilery, but it might be. So I'm not going to ask you about it. Well, I think but, if you I think if you talk about it out of context, I think. Well, it's out of fine. context, actually, out of context or in kind, it's not spoilery. No, so, I don't think so. But Mark doing Mark was great on his own mm. outside, especially the outside scenes because that's really where the arc begins. It really him. it really yeah. comes to pass. Like there's hints earlier, right? Um, but it, it really starts. That yeah, that's where it really comes out. I I've only seen it the one time in the theater, so I'm just going on memory. But I'm like Rain Man sometimes when it comes to music or movies. That even if I've only seen it once, I'll jump on it. So I'm going to talk about this next guy, who's kind of a dick. Now my question is this: not that the guy's a dick, just the character's borderline. He's not as much of a. He's like the opposite kind of dick that Conrad is. I would say. Yeah, I would yeah. think so. There's there's something friendly about Dan's character. Yeah. You know, and that like he's you know, maybe he's a little unfiltered, but I don't it doesn't come from a place of aggression. Right. Whereas uh the character I play I think is very passive aggressive. You know, um and and I really only ended up playing these characters because they're twins and uh I didn't uh think it would be well first of all i was like oh now i'm gonna have to manage yet another person's schedule because we were just doing this at night in our spare time and it was difficult um and i was like i have to manage one more person's schedule i'm just gonna lose my mind because it's just hard um but uh i wanted these twin brothers to be uh differentiated by a beard no beard and i just thought it was uh unreasonable to ask somebody to grow a beard and like shave it off and like, right. oh, again, if I miss something, I have to grow it back. And it's, it's a lot to ask of somebody like in your free movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, the part's pretty small and I was like, I'm just going to do it. Like I at least want to be in it. And there are no more parts because it's just how I wrote it. 
um i'm gonna like write in a pizza delivery man so i can be in the movie for two minutes well actually i told greg you should do that for me because i was like oh i'll be an extra he's like oh there's there's no call for extras in this movie i'm gonna be an extra anyway man like what's it about can i deliver a pizza or something can i be at a bar are you gonna be at a bar because i'm really good at man at bar yeah it's like that's (laughs) that would be typecasting um you filmed a scene on the parkway, because I know that you you can't. Well, if uh, you go, if you go back to that behind the scenes page, uh, if if uh, we can have uh, some visual reference for people listening, there it is. That's the very first one up top. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So oh. uh, the the scene, uh, there's a scene in the movie where I'm driving a car, but uh, I really just parked our old car in the driveway and put some green screen outside the well, windows. Well, yeah, I'm talking about the second unit footage. Oh, uh, that was just me sitting in the back seat. Ah, uh, uh, right on. Uh, while somebody, somebody else drove, was yeah. driving, yeah. Awesome. And of course, I'm guessing the same thing with that as well. Like you just sat in the passenger seat and you got that side stuff. Oh, I, that yeah, that's yeah. what it was. It was just that, yeah. just me out the window. Well, there's also that's... a long shot, if I recall. Oh yeah, that yeah. was just me on a bridge above uh, the highway, you right know, on. a yeah. pedestrian bridge, and I was just holding it above the anti-suicide fence. Or <laughs> I assume that's what that is. I think that's what I it assume is. that's what yeah. it's there for, or just for knuckleheads whipping stuff over. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go 60-40, but 60 leaning towards knuckleheads whipping stuff over. Because yeah. it's cool to throw shit, man. Yeah, exactly. It's because an accident. <laughs> exactly. I don't like douchebags like that. I might have been a douchebag like that when I was a kid, but I don't think I ever, like... Who can remember such things? Me. <laughs> but I don't, I don't like, think I ever, like, started throwing rocks, like, onto the parkway. Like, that's just stupid. Yeah, but would you be surprised? No. People are no. whipping pumpkins in the traffic. <laughs> No, it's funny on paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. in reality, don't people. If you're one of those people who throws rocks or pumpkins or fire or any bricks, you off, know, off don't of a, don't leave a your overpass. don't leave your GI Joes in the street for cars to run over. Like this is it's yeah. all just a bad idea, man. Like just there there are better things to do with your time in the 21st century. Yeah. And by the way, if you're in your 40s or older and you're still giving the finger in pictures, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> grow up and move out of the trailers thank you so where else is this going to be i know netflix we've talked about uh it? netflix amazon youtube um vimeo uh so i i believe uh vimeo is uh the trickier horse uh where they want money from you whereas um youtube you could either show it for free or sell it as a product right. Uh, Amazon, I think, is product based. Uh, Netflix is also uh, one where you pay them, um, but uh, Netflix obviously is an unbelievable international platform. Yes. Uh, whereas people, are, you know, some people are like, "Yeah, Vimeo," and other people are like, "What's that?" So I, I don't. Well, I don't Con know. Man with Alan Tudyk and Nathan Fillion is on that. That's yeah. his short series. Um, she rides the ghost bike. My mm-hmm. friend's film is on Vimeo. Actually, that's where it started. Were, but it's uh, short, right? Yeah, it's a 15 minute film. Yeah, that's I true. Think, yeah, you've I got a feature length point, film. That's what I it think, is. Yeah. I don't think you have to pay if, if it's if it's shorter. Right. Okay, yeah, that's true because Con Man are only like 10 minute episodes. Yeah. My buddy's film, I think, is like 15 or 20. Yeah, they, they have so, yeah. Uh, some sort of restriction where it goes from gotcha. free to paid. Now, are you going to do the free uh, viewing on YouTube or are you going to monetize it? Well, I'm sure it's um, monetized already with your. I think on Amazon, we don't have a choice. Um,. Netflix is obviously pretty clear. Um, YouTube's probably going to be the absolute last thing we do, um, but I just I just don't quite know what order we're going to do things in. Like I think um, I I do want to put together a Blu-ray. Uh, the Blu-ray is going to have um, the movie, all the trailers, um, five point one audio, commentary, and uh, behind the scenes feature um, bloopers. Which, uh, there and there's also a, a separate gag reel, um, but the behind the scenes feature is just basically gonna be like a short documentary on how how I did it and how you can apply that to your own filmmaking oh, right if on. you don't know where to begin. Um, so I I I also think uh, as a Blu-ray, I think that's probably more of a selling point in Absolutely, a way than the yeah. movie itself. Um, there's a, a red letter media movie um if you're familiar with that yes 
Uh, I think it's the one where Mr. Blanket owns the hardware store. Oh, I've never seen that one. Oh, it's it's. I think it's one of their best. I love his reviews. Um, oh yes, those are those those. It's a, such a wonderful character. Yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think it's I think it's yeah it's the one where he owns the hardware store and there's like these little monsters and they're like eating everybody. Um, but that movie comes with, uh, a documentary called how not to make a movie, which, uh, I was like, Oh, I don't really know exactly what red letter media is outside of the Mr. Plinkett reviews, but it has this d- great documentary that looks really interesting. So like, yeah, whatever, just give it to me. Oh, right on, right on. Um, and so I, maybe to people who are, you know, on the micro budget film, uh, level, um, getting, a movie with a companion documentary is like more of a selling point than just getting a micro budget movie. <laughs> I um, had started writing a, uh, I hate art house movies. Not all of them, but I hate the, the first movie that comes to mind is a uh, brief, brief interviews with hideous men. I think it was called, I can't remember exactly what the name was, but, uh, John Krasinski directed it and this. It was art. It was, I can't stand an art movie that says if you like while you're watching it that kind of is like if you don't like this it's because you don't get it. Yeah, like, I, I can't stand art. Like I like art, I love art, duh. And but I can't stand art for the sake of art to be pretentious. And so I was going to write a pretentious art film that would be nothing but vignettes that had nothing to do with each other. Oh, it would get in everywhere. Like you, you but, they'd be knocking your door down. But it, it, but it would have been like, but it all ties together, even though it didn't. But it's like, if you don't get it, that's on you, not me as the director. Yeah, yeah. We, we saw yeah. we saw a, a low budget film in the last six months or so, and it was absolutely horrendous. Um, but it got like tons and tons of great reviews uh, from bloggers, and uh, my wife came up with this theory that it's like the emperor has no clothes. Like, like if you don't think it's great, then like you must be like some kind of idiot. Right. Right. Um, we're like, no, this movie's boring like doesn't make any but there, sense but there are those like, pretentious like art guys hey this is art man mm-hmm. and they're out there like hey, you just don't get it you just don't understand yeah. it's just above you man no it's not you're just a pretentious dickhead yeah I, and I, I feel like there's there's some prejudice in against comedy you know and it has to be like this dignified art film um uh, that's interesting that's john krasinski uh because the woman that plays opposite him on their show Am I thinking of the right person? The Office. I think? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, the woman who plays Pam uh, was in a movie called the The Mechanical Man or the Giant Mechanical Man, something like that. Oh man, if you want to see like some pretentious indie drama, oh, really? it's it's on Netflix. Um, it's it's a hate watch. I don't know. I'm just I don't have time in my life. like if I if I'm gonna watch something awful that I know is awful, I'm gonna go for like Troll Two, Miami Connection, The Room. That which I don't think the room is that awful, because I think there's just something so magical about it. Oh yeah, I mean that... it's 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 a super entertaining watch. It's just uh, the inability to concentrate it. You know, like you're sitting there and you're watching the movie, and uh, you know the mom's like, "Oh, I I definitely have cancer." Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. You know, and then like it just never comes back again. It's never. I've never seen a movie before, though, where, like, somebody gets off by getting fucked in the belly button. There's a lot of belly button fucking in that movie. Yes, it's not supposed to be, but... No. No. Well, um, I, I, unless, like, his dick is that big and he's actually tit-fucking her. But, no, you, no, that can't be because... because oh, that's true, because he's thrusting down. Well, yeah. no, and but And we see her breasts. Yeah, yeah. she's 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 yeah. the boob lady. Yeah, poor, uh, poor Lisa. <laughs> I, I feel so bad for her. And, uh... I think if I ever get to the point where I want to end my life, I've got to find a dress and fuck it first. Yeah, I was going to say, you got to go full Citizen Kane. and Oh, my God, yeah. Uh, that room. was also your review that brought up the Citizen Kane oh, thing, wasn't I? it? I think so, yeah. Um, the Yeah, oh, man, there's just so many like little things, you know. You know, at some point, her character just goes crazy, and it's like, why? And you're like, I don't know. It's just entertaining. You know, she literally says that she said she was pregnant to make things more interesting, which is insane. That's insane. I did not hit you. How can you be saying this? You are tearing me apart, Lisa. I do. I do that all the time. Like, I walk past 
my dogs and i'm like keep the change nice doggy <laughs> nice doggy you're my favorite customer <laughs> and she's, like, she's like oh i didn't know it was you I was like, what, <laughs> no. what are you talking about he's a hideous gargoyle man did you ever watch nostalgia critic i i his, have his I, I don't recall it's fantastic because he brings up the same thing like oh Oh, wait a second. The glasses are on. Oh, the glasses are off. Oh, it's Johnny. Oh, no shit. Oh, yeah. that's what it is. Oh. I, I think uh, I saw a video that he put up when I guess like they had to take it down. Maybe they had to take it down for a short time. I don't know. Oh, of the rumors? Yeah, so, oh, I guess we, they were getting like legal heat for it. Oh, it's back up. Oh, it's oh, up. Oh, yeah, and it's it's glorious. And then there's the other guy, um, Fanboy Flicks. I can't remember his name. It's this guy from Canada. Trust me, you'll... Here. No, I'll have to check it out. Because it's about this and about that. He does a great... I, I don't think I've seen a bad review of The Room either. It's just... It's magic. Yeah, it's... it's, it's magic. It's, and you have not read The Disaster Artist. Yet, no, I, I'm, I'm going to see the movie first. I, I like to see the movie first read when I can. First. Um, because I feel like a lot of times when I... You know, the book is generally better. So I feel like, no, I want to keep going up. I want to keep gotcha. getting, right. having a better experience. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, I might've rushed to the end of Lord of the Rings because I thought one of the book people were going to ruin it for me. And, uh, I, I, cause I really thought, I really thought the logical conclusion, because I apparently have no sense of drama was that Frodo was be like, like, I can't part with the ring, but I know it has to be destroyed. So I thought he was just going to kill himself. Like I, I thought he was going to take the ring like goodbye, Sam. And he was just going to kill himself and just take the ring with him into the fire and i thought like that was going to be the end and i why i thought that based on anything in either <laughs> of those two movies i don't know seems um, the real hero of that movie or yeah that series, i can see yeah. that or aragorn too but most, like sam is mm. just he's so he's different not in the trained book. like oh yeah very different yeah or, or, yeah and which well, they I, all are all the hobbits are kind of different they're because yeah. they're they're kind of like no i guess i was thinking aragorn um, oh aragorn because he, his arc is much more dramatic in the movie. It's a lot more interesting. Because in the in the books, he's like, yeah, I have all the shards of Narsil, and at some point we will get this shit back together, and I'm yeah. going to go out, and I'm going to kick butt. And, like, for well, real, also, man. And, like, he's already made the decision in the book. Like, yeah, he already knows who true. he is. He knows what he has to do. And in the movies, like, he's like, no, like, you know, like, it's, it's like, I, I don't want to be tempted by any power at all, like. That's true. You know, because like, I, I think I think to the character in the movie, he's thinking like, no, like like my ancestor already had great power. That's why he was susceptible to the ring in the first place. Um, and I I think that's a lot more interesting than what's in the book. Did you uh, did you read any of the uh, the appendices? I think I read the Aragorn and Arrowin one. Oh my God, isn't that heartbreaking? Yeah, it's like a separate book. I mean, yeah. it is. It is basically a separate book. Um. And I read, uh, I read the Simorian. Simorian. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that one is, just, you know, it's it's the Bible. It's bonkers, you know, like the, you know, at the beginning, and they're like, oh, we are weaving the colors and making the world. Well, it's you know, just it's, as believable. No, uh, I, 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 I won't argue that point. Um, but uh, you know, it it kind of has that same in the beginning. Sort God create oh, You know, there's a. Uh, I saw a great meme the other day. It was like, in the beginning, man created God. Nice. Fantastic. And for those of you religious folks that are still listening to the show, thanks. Um, uh, and if you didn't like that, hey, forgive me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you got to do what you got to do, live how you want to live. And I, I think, you know, if you want to point to the idea that the, it costs you nothing to believe, I'm with that. Sure. Like. Yeah, be be with it. Do do your thing. Uh, Religion's not important. Belief is. I, I'm I'm very firm believer in that. <laughs> no pun intended. I don't. Have you seen Serenity? No, I don't the think Firefly? I have. Okay, well you should. You're missing out on something great. But there's this whole thing about. It's not about you know. I don't care what you believe in. Just believe in it. And it's it's very cool. I mean, as long as you're not hurting anybody. So. You know, a lot of people like all the intolerance in the book is Paul. Paul is a dick, and it's not the word of Christ that people are going to. People pretty much, I'm, I'm sure I've said this on the show before, but people know what the Bible says because somebody else told them that the Bible said it. So nobody's doing their own research. They just go, oh, the great, we're, we're theologians now. Nice. But, 
Firefly the Bible says that, so list. it says, huh? Firefly has been on my list for a long time. Oh, uh, you just, should watch it. Yeah, we're not going to talk about the Bible. It. Fuck that shit. We're going to talk about Firefly. Because, <laughs> uh, well, the Bible ties into that somehow, too, but in a really different way, and you get a very interesting character out of it. And watch this show first, and then the movie. Okay. I saw the movie first and loved it, but most people that watched the movie hated it, then watched the show, and then loved the movie. So, say yeah, what you will about that. I think that Serenity and the Avengers are the same movie. I'll have to I'll have to get up to speed, uh, but yeah. I I have heard him say something to the effect that like he didn't want to make another like giant character uh, thing that's multifaceted right. like Serenity, and then he was like, oh great, now I'm yeah. doing this. Yeah. What was I thinking? Uh, but I, it's it's been on my list. I'll have to check it's it out. It's thirteen hours of your life, and it's you're gonna want more after that, and you're gonna want to check out Doctor Horrible Sing Along Blog for no other reason than the fact that it's just a great musical and it's got nothing to do with yeah, it. Yeah, I always hear how great it is. No, oh, it's excellent. The songwriting is perfect, yeah. Well, dude, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, everybody, check out Will Reading when it's available. I'm going to post links of, to that, of course. I'll probably get you back down here when all that stuff gets on there. Oh, so, that'll be fun. You know, people do have short attention. What were we talking about? So, I'm glad you were here. What were we talking about? Oh, short attention spans. <laughs> so... Um, really, well, you know, cause you listen, uh, tell everybody where to find you. Uh, let's see. You can find me on creativejamie.com. That's sort of, uh, my general page. Uh, and, uh, you get all the quick reviews there and that kind of gets you to all the good YouTube stuff. Um, or you can go directly to the movie, uh, at willreadingmovie.com or you can just search will reading movie on Facebook. And that's where you get all that good stuff. And uh, Twitter? Or... My Twitter is Creative Jamie DC, I think, for I dot com. I think that's I what it is. I think it's Creative Jamie DC. Uh, I do like Twitter. Um, if uh, you want to reach me, that's a great place to find me. I'm not great about uh, Facebook uh, the way I should, but creativejamie.com, uh, you can get to my Twitter and my Facebook from there. Right on, and of course, you know, WDIM Podcast on the Twitter, on the Facebook, on MySpace, myspace.com slash WDIM Podcast. I'm trying to bring it back. I haven't reached out to them yet, but hey, you know, it was the better social media platform because we weren't stalkers. We were a community back then. I'd rather go back to a communal thing than a stalker syndrome thing. Of course, YouTube, um, just like um, quick reviews, do you have... A URL for that yet? No, uh, I moved quick reviews off my Creative Jamie YouTube channel and onto its own thing because apparently that works better for search engine optimization. Right. Uh, so it's going to take a while to build Subscribe, back subscribe, subscribe. Quick reviews and WDIM podcast. The more of you subscribe, the sooner that we can get our own URL, but I think we need 100. It's not that many. I don't know. They keep changing it. Uh, I don't. It used to be views. Now I think it's subscriptions. I don't know, but the bottom line is that if you do subscribe, this not only helps us with some of the more housekeeping chores, but I think it also is helpful in getting us into better placement in search results. So just a little bit of love goes a long way. That's very true. Nailed it. Nailed it. Wow. <laughs> Plus, it's not like you don't enjoy us. It's not like we're saying, oh, I know you don't like this, but can you like you know support us anyway? You know, just, yeah, and it's you free. You liking this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's free. It's free. It takes you no time. You don't get any better than free. You can wait in line for your $9 cup of coffee for a half hour. You can definitely like click a few buttons to show support and love. Speaking of clicking buttons to show support and love, you know, wdimpodcast.blogspot.com. There's that PayPal button. Say hi. Send me a buck. Send me five bucks. Uh, send me 5000 bucks so I can try to do a shot-for-shot shot remake of Will Reading. <laughs> You'll regret that. <laughs> With the same cast. <laughs> It'd be nice, though. I'll get to relax. I'm not moving any lights. I'm not moving yeah, right? any cameras. Just do it. You... Go ahead. But everybody's <laughs> going to play a different character in the cast than they played originally. Oh, that's going to be tough. That would be weird for Katie. Uh, that's true. That would be weird. I was I, thinking I'll probably about... probably have her play side, side, that Mark's role. That uh, would be interesting. I was, yeah. No, I was just uh, thinking about myself and already sweating it because I can't, I can't memorize dialogue. It's impossible. No, well, it's not impossible. For me, it is. Nah, anything is possible if you put your mind to it. Mm, what, what did George McFly say? Yeah, that's not true. If right. you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Yeah. Right on. Which he got from Marty. Yeah. I don't know if anybody caught that. Yes. Yeah. Did you see the fan theory? And then we're going to go. But the fan <laughs> theory where uh, 
his parents, once Marty reached a certain age, were like, oh my God, this is the kid. Oh, really? Yeah. They, they and that makes a lot of sense. Point? That's why they know he wants that. It's like, wait, he did all this for us. Let's buy him this truck. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was just because they were well off. He was like, yeah, sure, here's your truck. Whatever. I think they disguised it that way. But like, even his father gives him that weird look at the end. Like, oh, you know, I so, never really yeah. thought about that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And I guess that's like why Biff in the beginning of the second one. So we'll be talking about that next <laughs> time Jamie's on What Does It Matter podcast. Will Reading Movie, check it the fuck out when it comes out. I'm going to post all those links. They'll be in the show notes as everything gets to Netflix and YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You will get it. So, uh, 